let's get us started. Hello Mission Baptist, uh, good to see each one of you again, I'm glad you've tuned in this week. Um, I hope you have been praying for each other, I hope you have been lifting up our president, our leaders in prayer, our state officials, our governor, our medical people, our nurses and doctors in the hospital. I hope you have been praying for our, our police officers, our paramedics, and all those people that uh, uh, sometimes we often forget about. Uh, our soldiers, our military, of course, the National Guard that's been called out across the country. Uh, just continue to pray for them. And of course, pray for each other. Um, pray for Mission Baptist Church. Pray for each other during this time. Pray for Hope Baptist Church, uh, Sanctuary Baptist Church, and uh, all the churches in the area. Uh, and that's being affected by uh, this, uh, we used another term, pandemic uh, now uh, that we're going through. But I'm so thankful that we're able to communicate and we're looking into some other areas that we may be able to communicate on Wednesday night service. So I'll keep you posted on that. And uh, we're glad that we're able to come to you and preach the Word of God uh, today. Uh, we're going to go back to John. Chapter 20, if you have your Bibles with you, and uh, verse 19, uh, we started a message uh, last week, it's uh, scenes from the resurrection. Uh, as we are approaching that celebration of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, uh, He's risen, He is risen, and uh, I know there's some special services, I want to encourage you uh, to just be aware that you may be able to have a uh, service with Hope Baptist. Uh, so just keep, uh, keep each other posted on that. I'll send out an email. Uh, but we do want to be praying for those services. We, we celebrate each day. Uh, the Lord and Savior is risen. He is alive. We serve a, a, a risen God. He's a risen Savior. And, and that's uh, important. Uh, that is the uh, one factor that sets him apart from all of the other self-proclaimed little G gods of this world. Uh, that are of wood and uh, concrete and, and uh, those things that burn up. Those gods are dead, but we serve a living God, and we should be excited about that today. So we're going to go back and look at that portion of Scripture again uh, that we started on last week. Um, having a Savior today that's alive, uh, that should fill our hearts with encouragement. We should be encouraged about that today that our, our Savior's alive, uh, that he overcame death. Uh, there's never been another. Uh, outside of Jesus said, I am the resurrection, and he said, Lazarus, come forth, and he came forth. There's never been another uh, besides the Lord Jesus Christ that has come from the dead, uh, and he is alive. That's your Savior today. We should be rejoicing and glad and encouraged, and our hearts should be feel that he overcame all the obstacles of this world. Uh, that should be encouraging to us because uh, that same spirit indwells in us as the believer. We have that Holy Spirit indwelling in us. So we want to go back today and we're going to look at this scripture. I hope you found your place in John chapter 20 and uh, verse 19. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst, saying unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. And then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. And he uh, then said Jesus unto them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye remit, uh, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. Uh, let us pray. Our kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, uh, Lord, for the reading of your word. Uh, God, I pray that you'll bless, uh, God, the, the preaching of the word of God. You'll feel me, God. Uh, Lord, let every word that's said be said of it come from you, Lord. The Holy Spirit, just guide my speech. Uh, be with each one that's listening uh, today uh, to the message. I pray that they'll be encouraged. I pray if they're lost and they truly do not know Jesus as a personal Savior, 
I pray today would be the day of salvation for them. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. So last week, uh, just to back up, uh, we are on the first day of the resurrection. Mary Magdalene had been to the tent, uh, tomb that morning. It was empty. Uh, Peter had ran down in the other disciple and found it empty. Uh, Jesus, we find over in Luke chapter 24, if you read that gospel account, verses 1 through 35, we find that Jesus walked uh, with those two other disciples on the road to Emmaus and sat down for supper with them or to have a, a bite to eat and break some bread. And, and here it is evening time. Uh, we find him uh, the, with the disciples and we discussed him standing in the midst. Uh, the disciples was locked in a room. Uh, they was, the scripture says they were shut up and they was behind locked doors and they was there for fear of the Jews. We shared with you last night, last week, uh, how the presence of Jesus coming, uh, his presence, how it changed that situation, how it uh, made him glad, as we shared with you last week, uh, as it brought peace to their heart, just the presence of Jesus. And we shared with you last week how uh, his presence, uh, having Jesus in your life as a personal Savior, uh, the Holy Spirit and dwelling in you, that, that Spirit brings peace to your heart in a very fearful time. And I think this is a very timely passage of Scripture as we read it uh, during the times that we're going through right now. Uh, this week I want to share with you some fresh thoughts uh, from the same Scripture. Uh, after Jesus, okay, he come and he began to speak to these guys. And, and uh, verses 21, 22, and 23 is what we're going to look at today. Uh, Jesus said, okay, peace be unto you. Uh, he said there in uh, verse 19, uh, in verse 21, he said also, peace be unto you. Okay, guys, calm down. I got something that I want to say. Uh, this, is one, this is the first message unto his disciples after he is resurrected. And it is uh, very much a reflection of the Great Commission uh, that we'll read to you later from Matthew 28. Because uh, he gave them some commands in this scripture. He, uh, Jesus is beginning to encourage them and, and, and to prod them in a way and encourage them to go out and to come out from behind those locked doors. And I, I believe he's encouraging them not to have that fearful spirit about them, that he is with them and his presence and peace is with them. And I think that's why he shows up at this particular time uh, for these men. I want you to notice, uh, number one, as we look at the scripture, one of the things Jesus said unto them in verse 21, he said in the latter part, he said, peace, peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so I send you. Uh, what, you think, that's, well, that's a strange thing to say at this time. We find these men behind locked doors, and they're being fearful. And exactly, that's, Jesus knew that. He knew that's exactly where those men was at. Uh, he knew they was behind those locked doors. He knew that they had the spirit of fear. Uh, but he said in the scripture, he said, as my father has sent me, Jesus, speaking of himself, his father sent him into the world. He said, so send I you. And he is speaking to the disciples and he's also speaking to us today. He's speaking to the church today. He's speaking to the believer today. If you're born again, he says, I send you. Send you where? Out into this world. Uh, send you into this world. Where did the Father send Jesus? He sent Jesus into this world. For what purpose? What was the primary purpose of Jesus? Uh, what was his purpose for coming to this world? And uh, in that, we will find uh, the purpose of his church also. And we see in the scripture, the first, let's think about the scripture here. Well, why did the Father send Jesus into this world? Let's first think about uh, why didn't, what didn't Jesus come for? And let me tell you what he didn't come for. Uh, he didn't come to improve your economic condition. Jesus did not come for that. He did not come to improve social justice. Uh, Jesus did not come to provide you with your best life here on earth. That's not the purpose in Jesus coming. 
Uh, he didn't, Jesus did not come to solve the political issues of the, the biblical times. He didn't come to solve the political issues, period. Now listen, Jesus can do all those things, but that was not his primary purpose in coming to this earth. It was not for social justice. It was not to improve your economic condition. It was not to provide you with a big house to live in. That was not his purpose in coming to this earth. So you say, preacher, what was his purpose? If you turn over to Luke chapter 19 and verse 10, you will find the purpose of Jesus coming. I'm going to read that passage of scripture to you. It says, for... The Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Now read that again. The Son of Man came to seek. That means to search for, to search out. That means, you know, you need to mark this down in your Bible where you know the purpose of Jesus. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. I don't know about you, friend, but that's the condition that Jesus found me in. He found me in a lost condition. And what did Jesus do for me? He provided, a, provided salvation for me. He saved me. That's what Jesus did for me. And friend, that's what he can do for you today. And you notice, as the Father has sent me, even so I send you. You say, well, I'm not, I'm not here to hang on a cross, but just hold on this minute. I believe God is calling us the church, the church. I believe God's calling the church back to this purpose today. I don't know all the reasons for this pandemic. I don't know all the reasons we're going through these things that we're going through in our society now. Parts of High Point and Winston-Salem and um, Greensboro are on a, a, a sort of a lockdown right now. I, I'm not sure the purpose behind all those things. I don't claim to, to know those things specifically, but I do believe God is calling his church back to this purpose that he first commissioned us to. He said, I send you into this world for this purpose, to see out the ones that's lost and to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. You know, you are not here for anything less than this purpose. Everybody wonders, well, what, what, what's the purpose of my life? What has God called me to do? He's called you to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is your purpose, is to bring glory to God through the proclaiming of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So through letting your light so shine so that men may see you, no, that they may see the Holy Spirit indwelling in you, so that they may see Jesus living in your life. They may see a changed life. I don't know about you, friend, but salvation changed my life. I am not the same person after I met Jesus, there was a definite change took place in my life. That's what the world needs to see in the church today. God is calling the church back to where we need to be. We need to get back to the purpose for which God said, I send you, the church, the believer, into this world to proclaim the gospel. Luke 5.32 says, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. This is, this is the word of God. Luke 5.22, mark it down. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. I don't know about you, friend, but I was sick. I was sin sick. I needed help. I was at a place that I couldn't get out of. I couldn't make things right with God. I didn't have no peace in my life. I didn't know what re uh, forgiveness was. I didn't know what it felt like to, to experience and feel true forgiveness. I was carrying the burden and the weight of my sin. But thank God there was somebody that said, I'm going to seek out lost sinners and I'm going to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to them. And that's what I heard. I heard this, but see, he calls sinners to repentance. This is a word that I'm afraid has slipped away from many of the gospel messages. It seems to me, just like looking around in America, that the church is involved in all kinds of proclamations. And they're, they're preaching a lot of different things. But one of the things I don't hear a lot of is the preaching of repentance. 
I don't know about you, friend, but I was walking in a direction that was contrary to God. I was headed in a direction that was contrary to the Word of God, to the teachings of God. I was doing all kinds of things that was ungodly. And when the Father spoke to me, when I heard the gospel message, what that did was it caused a brokenness in my heart. I realized I was a sinner. I realized I needed forgiveness of my sins. And what I did was I came to God. He was drawing me. I felt Him drawing me and pulling Him to me. I came into a place where I said, Lord, forgive me. I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I need You to save me, Lord. I need You to forgive me, Lord. And and what what happened from that place on was that I came up and I turned away from that direction I was going in. And I turned and I walked in a new direction. I walked towards God. And that's what repentance is. It's a turning away from the old and a turning away to the new. I'm sorry, friend. If you hadn't repented, there's a good chance that you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ and you do not have salvation. Because there's a turning away from that sin. I'm not saying that I'm perfect today. But I can tell you this. There's a definite change in this man's life. And you will find that when you meet Jesus in the Word of God, you'll never find a man or a woman that met Jesus and there wasn't a difference took place when they believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. This is what He sent us into the world to preach and proclaim. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Church, I really believe that God is calling His his church, calling His people back to a place of repentance. I truly believe that He's calling us to a place that involves bowing your knees and your head and getting on your face before God and saying, Father, forgive me. 1 Peter 4, 17, For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. Let me tell you this. Sinners are doing what sinners are supposed to be doing. When I was out living in sin, I was doing exactly what a sinner should do. I was out doing everything contrary to God. That's exactly what... We shouldn't be surprised by that, guys. We shouldn't be surprised that sinners are doing what sinners are supposed to be doing. What we should be surprised at is the ones that have made a profession. It says, I know Jesus. The ones that says, says I've been born again. I've been baptized. I, I'm a member of the local church. And, and we're living contrary to the Word of God. And see, friend, that should bother us. That's why I say the scripture, scripture here says let judgment, that judgment must begin at the house of God. We look around the country and we say, well, the, oh, this is why we're going through this pandemic. Uh, look at all this ungodliness, all this homosexuality, all that. That is why. And I, I trust me, I know God is not pleased with that. But more, what bothers me and what I believe is more important to the heart of God, if you want to say, is to look at His church. Look at the condition of His church. Look at what's going on in the church. He said, I send you into the world. And I, and I told you, I was sharing, this is a portion, uh, a portion of the Great Commission. Turn to Matthew 28 uh, with me. And uh, everybody, if you've been in church long, I know you've read this portion of Scripture. Matthew 28, verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. That's our Lord and Savior. He is all powerful. He says unto the church, to you and me, Go therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Everything we do, everything we do 
is centered around the gospel. I, I'm sitting here at Hope and I look up on the banners. It don't matter whether it's fellowship or discipleship or worship or, or ministry. Whatever we do is centered around the gospel of Jesus Christ. It, it's all about Jesus. Uh, in the scripture here, what we get is the same thing I just read uh, in Matthew 21. He says, send I you. Matthew 28, he says for you to go. Go. You say, well, we can't go. We are on lockdown right now, preacher. What are we supposed to do? Listen, there's some of you that's on social media. Uh, let's say a lot. <laughs> and you spend a lot of time there. What I encourage you to do is go. Go share Jesus. There has never been a better time in history to share the gospel, the hope of salvation, to share repentance. You can have true forgiveness. You can know forgiveness. You can repent of your sins and turn to Jesus, and he will forgive you. Oh, from the day that when that sin was lifted off of me, what a, what a burden that was took off my back. Uh, that burden I was carrying of that sin. I never knew what peace was until I met Jesus. Friend, that's why I'm sharing with you this morning. He says to go, share it with your neighbors, share it with your family, share it with your friends. Those that God has put in your neighborhood, those that are around you in the yard next door, I see them grilling out. Share Jesus with those people. Right now, it's so easy to start that conversation. You say, friend, how are you doing today? I'm doing fine. What do you think about all these events that's going on right now? Well, it's sort of fearful. It's sort of scary. I, I, I've lost my job. I'm, I'm stuck at home. Well, listen, you don't, you don't have to be fearful. And there you go. I know one that can calm those fears. Church, Mission Baptist Church, I want to encourage you to stay focused. We're building faith and family with a focus. And that focus is heavenly. It's heavenly. Hebrews 12, 2, looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher, finisher of my faith. We're, we're running a race. And we're looking to the finish line. And that one that's already finished the course. We want to tell people about that Jesus. That resurrected, the one that defeated death. That's the one that's going to bring hope. I want to encourage you. He says, I send you. Notice uh, in verse number 2, verse 22. Verse 22, he said. He said, and, then, and when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye uh, the Holy Ghost. In the gospel accounts of the baptism of Jesus, um, we read of the heavens opened when John the Baptist baptized Jesus. The heavens opened, the Spirit of God descending like a dove and rested on Jesus. That Holy Spirit, that Spirit of God that rested on Jesus. It, Jesus was, was preparing to start his ministry, to run the course. He was getting ready to call and carry out that purpose. He was sent into the world. And then he was empowered got the, by the Spirit of God to run that race, to finish that course, to, to go to Calvary. He, he needed the, to be empowered by the Spirit of God. And we see that Spirit descending on him. And, and so what was Jesus saying to these fearful disciples? Uh, of course, he was saying, I send you, but I'm not going to send you alone. He says, I'm going to send you here. He said, receive you the Holy Ghost. See, friend, that's the problem right now. We're trying to do a lot of ministry and we're trying to have church without the Holy Ghost of God. We're having meetings that's got very good singing in it, that's got good praying in it, but it's not anointed of God. It's not filled with the Holy Ghost of God. Listen, friend, you can't, it's hard to go out and witness to somebody in this world without being filled with the Spirit of God, well, without the Holy Ghost of God leading you to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. We've been called. This Holy Spirit here is given to us. This empowers us. The Holy Spirit empowers us to do the work of God. Acts 1.8, but ye shall receive power. Acts 1.8, you shall receive power after the, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. 
And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and the uttermost part of the earth. Did you catch that, catch that part? The Holy Ghost is come upon you. When that happens, ye shall be witnesses. You see, we have to have the Holy Ghost upon us. The Holy Ghost indwelling us. The Holy Ghost leading us to be the witnesses that we need to be during this time of anxiety and fear. You can't be a witness in this time if you're not filled with the Holy Ghost of God in you. We've got to have God's leading. That's what empowers us to do the work of God is the Holy Spirit of God. And in my own strength, there's nothing I can do without the words of God, without the Holy, the Spirit, the Scripture. There's no hope I can offer a man, woman, or child. But with the Holy Spirit of God filling me, the Holy Spirit of God leading me, and with the Word of God in me, I can I can give them something that will change their life, will change their destiny. His power in it. There's power in the Holy Ghost of God. Ye shall receive. And maybe so. When you come in faith believing, you receive the Holy Ghost of God. Whether it's sharing the gospel, whether it's teaching the word of God, whether it's baptizing, whether it's fellowship, it doesn't matter what the church is doing, whether it's a prayer meeting, whether it's a worship service, whether it's some type of ministry, it has to be led of the Holy Ghost of God. During this time, you're in your home right now. You've got to be led of the Holy Ghost of God. Listen. If we have sin, we've got to confess it. And we've got to get these things under the blood. And we've got to pray, God, lead, let, Lord, I'm yielding myself to the Spirit's leading. I'm not leading this thing anymore. I'm letting the Spirit lead me. God lead me. It says here, and in, it's time for the church to start, start carrying out its purpose. And carrying out the purpose the way God God intended for us to carry out that purpose. And that is through the leading of the Holy Ghost of God. Friend, without the leading of the Holy Ghost of God, I'd lead you in a ditch. And that's exactly what I did with my life. Without the leading of God, I don't know where to lead you to. But with the, with the Word of God and with the Spirit of God, we have a, a direction. We have a finish line. We have a purpose. Uh, we, have, we have been commissioned. He sent us. He said, go. Don't let this time in your house hinder you. You share the gospel with everybody that comes in your vicinity. They need it right now. You know, God's church has gotten wrapped up in so many other things in this world. I believe God is calling his churches. And not that these other things, it's important that we disciple. It's important that we fellowship and we worship. But our primary purpose for the church is the spreading of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Sometimes I feel we're doing everything but that. It's all about Jesus. Church, let us not forget that it's all about a resurrected Savior. Church, God's speaking through this pandemic. We should not have a shortage of workers in the church. Every position should be filled. We should not have empty pews during services. Our lives that each one of us lead, and you notice God's put a stop on it. He's put a break on it. In a way, you know, I, I, I like it. It's allowed me to reflect on what's important. He's put the brakes on all of us. You know, I appreciate them Sunday night services even more. I appreciate them Wednesday night services even more. See, when you get that freedom took away from you, I hope, friend, you're thinking about that. I am. I miss you guys. I miss the church. I miss the fellowship. I hope that you feel the same way. Guys, why do I want to go three services a week? 
Why do I want to give him more than that? Why do I want to give him visiting on Saturday? Because I love God's church. I love the fellowship. I love the discipleship. I love the soul winning on Saturdays. Why? Because of Jesus. Because I love Jesus. I, I think God has put us in a position that we need to take a long, hard look. A long, hard look at where we're at. You notice that uh, it's very unusual. He uh, said here in this scripture, notice that he said in verse 22 that he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. That, that, that comes from uh, Genesis 2, 7. And the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. You know, the Holy Spirit is that breath of God in us. The Holy Spirit is that breath of God in us. That's why I said he breathed on them. This is a, this is a, a creation uh, statement here. He breathed into man the breath of life. I, I know you may not realize, can God give you that breath? And God also give you the Holy Spirit of God. That's the life that's in me, is that Holy Spirit of God. He breathed on them. The Holy Spirit brings life. The Holy Spirit brings peace. And last all, verse 23. And this may be a sort of a strange verse. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven of them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. So, whoa, wait a minute. Uh, God is the only one that has the power to forgive sins. Correct. This church, uh, this verse is very uh, misinterpreted. Uh, it gives... In some denominations, uh, some religions, I guess you would say, the priest is given the, this authority and they take it from this verse that you go in and you confess your sins to the priest and the priest can forgive you. Uh, this is not what this verse is saying. Uh, if you turn over to your, in your Bibles to Acts chapter 10, Acts chapter 10, I'm going to share with you a portion of scripture, Acts chapter 10 and verse 42 you found your place and he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and the dead to give all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins whosoever believeth in him shall receive forgiveness of their sins is what he's saying. Um, I don't have, there's nothing. If I say to you your sins is forgiven, it's on my authority, I can't forgive sins and it doesn't mean anything. But when you come in faith believing and you receive the Lord Jesus Christ by your own testimony and based on your testimony, based on the word of God, when you come and you've repented and you've believed, I have the authority based on the word of God to tell you that your sins are forgiven. You don't have to worry about those sins. When you've come, the Holy Spirit has drawn you, and that's what you'll find all through the word of God. You'll find the men of God, Paul, Peter, you'll find them standing up and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, Luke, uh, 24 and 46 and he said unto them thus it is written and thus it is behooved Christ to suffer and to rise again from the dead on the third day and that the repentance and the remissions of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning in Jerusalem 
You know, we, we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and, and we preach the gospel to, to people. We share the gospel with people and then they receive the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I don't know about you, when, when I received the gospel of Jesus, Jesus Christ, I had did many things that I was ashamed of and I was carrying a lot of guilt and a lot of shame and, and I felt that burden. And then somebody shared with me the gospel and they said, you know, God has forgiven you. And they told me that, that God had forgiven me of my sins. And I was like, man, he's forgiven me. I don't have to carry this shame and guilt over all the things I've did. Now, if I need to make something right, I'll make it right. But I don't need to carry that shame. And it was because a man of God stood up and he preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he said, when you repent, when you turn away from that sin, you can have forgiveness of your sins. You are forgiven because of a resurrected Savior today. I can proclaim that to you. And that's what this verse is saying. So that's what... Jesus is compl uh, he's compelling. He said, I send you by the Holy Spirit of God to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you tell them that their sins is forgiven, not based on the preacher, but based on the Holy Spirit of God, based on the Word of God. I can stand with authority and say that it's true, it's faithful, that your sins are forgiven when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That brings peace. That fear is removed. We must preach the gospel. We must preach the gospel to each and every person that comes in, we come in contact with. I didn't put anything down in my notes about this. Uh, as I was studying, I wasn't sure if we would get to it. But if you uh, go back to John chapter 20, the first time Jesus came there in verses 19 through 23, there was one missing, and that was Thomas. Eight days later, uh, these men was back in the same room, locked behind doors, and Thomas was present. And we see that in verses 24 through 29. It's, what amazes me is that Jesus had already been and visited those disciples. There was only one missing, Thomas. And Thomas didn't believe the testimony of the other disciples or any of those people. He said he had to see it for himself. He had to, he had to feel him and touch him. <laughs> Listen, friend. This is, a, this is from the Word of God, verse 27. Uh, Jesus says, return. He said in uh, verse 26, the latter part, peace be unto you. Then he said, he, unto Thomas, Reach hither thy finger and behold my hands and reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side. Be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus says unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, yet have believed. And that's us, church. I hadn't touched I hadn't touched the nail-scarred hands. But I will one day. I will touch them one day. I will see him face to face one day. Thomas here, he came back for that one. That's how much he cares about one. You're sitting there today and you think, nobody cares about me. Nobody cares about me. They don't care about what I'm going through. They don't care that I'm all alone. Let me tell you, friend, Jesus cares. We see in the scripture here, he came back for the one. Just so Thomas could touch him and feel him and say, listen, he said, don't be faithless. He said, be believing. Friend, I'm telling you this morning, be believing. And I love Thomas's response. My Lord, my God. It's very personal. And friend, I want to tell you, this is a very personal salvation. I want to encourage you, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ in this personal way, he's my friend. He's the one I talk to. I want to encourage you to bow your head right now. And I want to encourage you, uh, if you're there, uh, Father, uh, you lead your family in prayer, uh, and, and you talk to your young kids in the home, 
Uh, make sure their hearts are clear. Make sure they know Jesus at this time. I, God's put you in a position to minister to your family right now. And I want you to, to minister to them. Make sure they know Jesus. Make sure they're believing. And, and if not, you need to pull them aside. If you've got a cousin or a family member, would you need to talk to them. Make sure that they're found believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. And friend, I hope at this time you would surrender your life and make Jesus Savior and Lord of your life. God bless you until we meet again next week.